And joining me now in studio is Robert Donashi, White House reporter for the Washington Examiner. Robert, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. So we just heard the Democrats need about 23 seats to gain control of the House. What's your predictions as we look into the next week? So conventional wisdom has Democrats taking by, back the House by about three to five seats. The Republican strategists that I've been speaking to, the Democratic strategists that I've been speaking to, typically hold that line. There is one caveat, is that m many of these races, we look at Dave Bratz, we look at some in Texas, some in California, they are within the margin of error. They're within one to three percentage points. So there is a possibility, a slim possibility, but a possibility that Republicans keep maybe four or five seat majority. Okay, so we'll continue to watch that because there are some close races, like you say. So let's turn now to the Senate. Yeah. Um, how does it look? Do you think Republicans likely can maintain a majority? I'm kind of with Nate Silver. I think it's probably 85% or more likely that Republicans keep the majority. And furthermore, I think they pick up two, maybe three seats. Okay, so this is kind of like what we've been predicting, which is that House could go to Democrats but uh, Senate is say, locked like in a, pretty much to Republicans, yeah. Okay. Well, so we're, since we're here in the home stretch, you know, looking at all the midterms, it almost feels in some ways like a presidential election because we got President Trump on the road. We have former President Barack Obama on the road campaigning. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think that impact is going to have on voters? So first of all, I was in North Carolina on last Friday at the rally. I saw about 10,000 people there in and outside completely energized, ready to go. I think what you saw in Texas with President Trump, if we're going to look at him first, is that he got 20,000 people out, out on a Tuesday, Thursday night. They waited for 36 hours. If that correlates at all to voter turnout, I think Trump is having a big effect here. On the flip side, Barack Obama is still remains probably the key figure of the Democratic Party, a party that's still trying to figure out who's leading it, what their message is, and you know, basically generally where they're going. So right now, Barack Obama is probably the best campaigner that they have. He's already proving to pack houses. His uh, actual effect, though, we'll have to see how that comes out here in a few days. 28 million Americans have already cast their ballots nationwide. We're talking absentee early voting this year. Mm -hmm. um, you'd mentioned Texas. That's where um, I'm going to be heading to cover this. Uh, early voting there is pretty high. What do you think is, accounts for this surge in it? Is it sending out an early message or what is it? Well, so I think the economy is doing well. I think also that the president is, is touching on the issue that pretty much uh, Republican voters care about the most, which is immigration. If you poll them within number one or number two, immigration plays out as a huge factor. Mm -hmm. And you see it in Texas, right? Uh, the president talked about the 14th Amendment last, last week. That was like a little contentious. Everybody was nervous about what it would do. You look at Republicans nationwide, 52% of them support that. In Texas, 66% of them support that in terms of Republican voters. They support building the wall. They support immigration. They like where the economy is going. They like generally President Donald Trump's message. So, yeah, I mean, if that holds, I think we'll... And I'm we'll guessing traditionally the Republicans turn out for the early vote. Well, they do, mm -hmm. always. Uh, far more than Democrats typically do. And also, you know, the Democratic Party has a lot of young people. Young people don't always turn out to vote. They're very enthusiastic on social media. They're very enthusiastic maybe on the street, but that doesn't always correlate for them actually getting out to the ballot box. Okay, well, we'll be watching to see how many of them show up on Election Day itself. Robert Donashi, White House reporter for The Washington Examiner. Thanks so much for your analysis. Thanks for having me.